accept your pennies right and we stand in solidarity with the part-time cashier at the snack bar for denying you and you guys are in solidarity as is everyone was on text everyone on twitter everyone thinks i'm completely wrong that i think she should have taken the pennies because it's still legal currency it is but much like the 50 or 100 it is the choice of the retail now I gotta tell you, I've always been, as I think most of us are, very confused about the 50s and 100s, far more than the pennies. You, you can get them. If you go to a bank machine, many bank machines now give you the option, if you're taking like a couple hundred bucks, do you want two, five, two 50s and five 20s? Like they're giving them yeah, to right. you at the bank. And then you take that and it's legal tender and it's not ripped and it's not shredded and you take it to a gas station they say no we're not taking it like i i don't get it like why is all the responsibility on us instead of making a bill that's not so easy to counterfeit sure it's a simple great question and it's never really been answered but it, it's it's become our problem yep right it's your problem oh, you gotta do it. we'll give you the 50s but they don't have to take them like it's ridiculous when you think about it like what's next 20s we don't take 20s <laughs> Well, what do you think? I bet, because it was never 50s. No, it right. was always started at 100s. Right. And then people said, well, you know what? We got a bum 50 here. Yep. Let's just shut that down, too, and they're allowed to. And can I also just say what makes me laugh is when you give someone a 50 or a 100 and they do take it and they, like, you know what you're talking about. Some old girl oh, that's working at a grocery store. And she's looking yeah. like, get out of here. Like, you're yeah. insulting me now. Yeah, yeah. like you're Rick Masters from right. To Live and Die in L.A. Exactly. Let's go with her that. Her previous job was 35 years at the Canadian <laughs> Mint. Give her a break. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> So you, Parker, you're going to have to pay your penance for, for your behavior at the rink. Yeah, man. But talking about Canadian coin, the most recent is the, the uh, $10 bill with Viola Desmond. Now, Viola Desmond was in a theater, and this was 1946, and she sat where the white people were supposed to sit, and it actually became, strangely enough, a tax violation because of the price differences and the tax on the seats. Viola Desmond would have none of it, and she became a great beacon for those of color in this country and is now on the $10 bill. And it's interesting. I had one yesterday. I think it was the first one I've actually had. And the way that the bill is vertical rather than horizontal, where you read it vertically. Yes. And you get used to that pretty quick. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so now the next one is the five. Uncle Wilf mm -hmm. has been on there mm -hmm. for as long as we can. I think since the beginning of this generation of fives. Right. Wilf Laurier. So they, they, this is what they do. They freshen it up, I guess? Yeah. Okay. Well, somebody a little... Do you know anybody that ever partied with Wilf Laurier? Not one. No. I've you partied know? at Wilf Laurier University. Many have. Yes. Many have. But not. I've only spocked Wilf. I've never actually <laughs> partied with him. And, and more than likely, that will be the end of spocking your fives. That might be worth some money. <laughs> I think it could be. And there are some brilliantly done spocks out there. <laughs> right? That's a great piece of currency right Where's there. Where's Willie.com? Keeping. If you have a spock five... <laughs> You are made. You may uh, make tons of money off it. That could be a great name for a Canadian band. Yeah. Spock Five. Spock Five. The Spock Five. Okay, so now the new five dollar bill. One of the and, and we've now found this out that there are, as you would expect, rules when it comes to bills. There are three rules, three criteria that must be met in order for a figure to be on a bill. They must be Canadian by birth or naturalization. Understandable. They cannot be a fictional character. So, the Jolly Green Giant. Right, gone. The Friendly Giant. The Littlest Hobo. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Giant Tiger. <laughs> none of those, none of those, Casey or Finnegan. Right. Not happening. You can Wolverine. get a lot of Wolverine's gone. Wolverine can't be on No. Yeah. And no. a Green Gables. No. That is exactly the. Uh, the example they use. They say, no, Anna Green Gables could never be on the Canadian Five because Anne is not real. Finally, and this is where Gord Downey gets exempted from possibly being on the $5 bill, 
they must be deceased for at least 25 years. Didn't know that. Which means March of 1995. They must have been, they must have died before March of 1995. Obviously, Gord Downey does not qualify. It would suck if, like, one of your loved ones died in April of 1995. Also correct. They were famous and actually had a shot of being right. on the bill. Like, really, when you think about it, and 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 we all know the way that, that money is being supplanted by technology and credit cards, debit cards, but it's still a phenomenal honor to be on a bill. I mean, sure. when you talk about honors... Okay, so Gord Downey's out, and we understand, too, that with Gord Downey, there is some recency bias. Personally, and, and if, you, if you're listening and you're thinking, there's somebody I would like to have on the $5 bill, and it's not who I'm going to say, I hope you don't take this wrong, but I cannot possibly understand how you couldn't say Terry Fox. I, I don't get it. I just don't. I 100% agree with you. I think that that is the best choice out there. I ask you this, though. When the $10 bill moved over to Viola Desmond, was there any sort of, like, who should be on the $10 bill, or was it just announced? Because I think it was just announced. Like, it just came I out. I believe it was. I yes. think this is the first time there's, like, a fan vote, so Correct. to speak. Okay, so when Viola Desmond was announced for this, I had no, I had no idea who she was. I, I had no idea. So I learned about Viola Desmond through that. Do you think, and I'm just saying it, um that maybe somebody else such as a Viola Desmond or somebody of that ilk on the $5 bill would then be like an educational tool other than a I, I think the majority okay. of people of our age is is, a, is knows about Terry Fox and I think there's enough Terry Fox in schools that I think a lot of kids know about Terry Fox and I'm just, I'm just no, asking I, I understand but I believe the, the a rational response to that would be the bill is not there for educational purposes. She qualified, uh -huh. Viola Desmond. Yep. And you're right, a lot of people, I didn't know much about her. Yep. I, I think most Canadians were in that. But I don't think by any means that that is a necessary quality. So it shouldn't be used as a tool? I don't think okay. so. If now, not, no, I, 20 you, years from now, it could be somebody else sure. that not that many people know about where you go, wow, that's an awesome story. I didn't know that. But it should be Con Canadians who contributed a massive amount to this country. Agreed. I think if you did a poll in Canada, whether you gave people options or they can write in their own, I think Terry Fox would, I don't even think it'd be a close number to him. I think just the nation would agree with you. I, I can't, I'm, there might be the odd person I can't think off the top of my head, like when they did the greatest Canadian and all that kind of stuff, what's Tommy his name? The, the, yeah. But I, I honestly think the average Canadian or majority of Canadians, I average, should say, would we say to you? Well, because once you start bringing in famous Canadians, and, and famous, obviously, with Viola Desmond, not that important, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the $10 bill, was not, she was not famous mm -hmm. before that. She was known in certain circles, but the bill made her famous. Mm -hmm. There are many Canadians who are so polarizing. Well, I'll give you an example, and I know it's obviously not going to happen, but it, it is an example from the polarization standpoint. It's Don Cherry. Right. Right? You get at, thrown out a number, 50% saying the greatest, and 50% saying absolutely 100% not. How many people <laughs> have you heard in your life, for any reason whatsoever, badmouth Terry Fox? That, that's no. just not a one. I, all he did try to do was raise money for cancer. Somebody tweeted over the last few weeks, and they got, oh, you know who it was? Faith Goldie. Okay, okay. and then, so I only caught the ratio. I don't follow her, but I caught the ratio there. And it was basically, the idea was that in the States, Terry Fox wouldn't be celebrated the way he is because he didn't finish. And they uh -huh. love finishers, uh -huh. but he was so ignorant. Uh -huh. But what you saw was the response uh -huh. from Canadians, right? Like, are you freaking kidding me? Like. You say I'm going to walk a mile and you're in perfectly good health and you get three quarters of the way through the mile and you don't make it. Well, you made a promise and didn't make it. When you have cancer and one leg and you're running a marathon every single day, it's not very difficult to understand that you may not make it across the country. As you're battling cancer. Correct. I mean, what he did was absolutely, what you said, ran he a marathon. He didn't say my foot hurts. Right. How many I'm dying of cancer, cancer, and I can't go any further. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to do 
a marathon a day. Mm -hmm. I can't do it anymore. Who do you think was the most disappointed that he couldn't finish? Terry Fox. Like, that's so ignorant. Also correct. Oh, it was stunningly ignorant. And if you have anyone in your family that's died of cancer, that's ignorant. Well, that, and, and I think the reason I even noticed, it got retweeted by people who just wanted to ratio it, obviously. And in Canada, you, you're not going to find anyone who is going to agree with that sentiment. Mm -hmm. I, I've never heard anyone say, well, I didn't like Terry Fox's politics. Mm. Or I didn't like yeah. that he was a liberal, he was Nothing. a conservative. Or he was this or he was that. He was just a guy. And a young man. A young guy who had the most terrible thing happen to him and he took it and he's and, and even Terry Fox, if if by some miracle he came back, would be absolutely blown away with the hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. that have been raised in his name since 1981. Have you guys had the, the honor of going to the memorial in Thunder Bay? I have. I've been there once. I cried like a baby. So, John, so did I. And everybody else who was there was doing the exact mm -hmm. same thing. Nobody there. And, like, kids, grandparents, everybody. It was the most amazing place I've been to in this country. Four of us on motorcycles. We go to the Terry Fox Monument and cried. That's yeah. just yeah. what we did. Yeah. Four guys, grown men, yep. going across the country. And we just stood there and bawled like babies. Yeah, I couldn't get through the 30 for 30 uh, voiced by Steve Nash. Like, it's just too much. It's so emotional. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, unfortunately gets thrown around, even in, in the world of professional sports, is let's say a goalie has a bad game in the NHL. Somebody in, invariably is going to say, well, you try and do it, right? You try and do it. Well, there are some, some games that a goalie plays so badly that if you know how to play goal, you might have been able to stop one or, the, one or two of those. What Terry Fox did, there's not an ounce of my being that I, that thinks that I could do that. Like, not an ounce. He, he trained. He ran 5,000 kilometers to train for the marathon. So he ran basically like, a large portion of the length of the country, almost all of it, to train to run across the country. Mm -hmm. Never mind the terrain that he had to go through. And I didn't realize until you told me that I assumed... And maybe this goes back to your educational thing that maybe more and more people will learn about it. And I know my kids know, you know, as much as they can for little kids with Terry Fox. I thought it was a parade all the way through the country. I didn't realize it didn't really turn into a celebration until he got to Ontario, Toronto, right? Yep. Like, that's incredible on its own. Mm -hmm. oh, at first, well, it was like, ah, some guy's doing yeah. something. Some guy, I don't right. know, I've heard about right. it. Yeah. Guys run. Now, I mean, there was no social media then, right? It might be different, but... Nobody, people didn't know who Terry Fox was. Mm -hmm. People didn't know, well, this guy, I think this guy might have it in him. I'm sure there were a ton of people going, I don't know who this guy is, but that's not possible. Right. Like, you can't do that. Like, what did, what is this clown thinking, right? Of course there were Canadians who thought that. And it did all change when he got here to Toronto. And then not only the country, but the world found out about it. Like, I mean... It's got to be him. He, so it I'm, has to be. I would say, okay, so let's just take a prime minister. Any one of us could be prime minister for a day. Mm. Any adult could get through a day as prime minister. Now, you may not be very good over the course of a year or two or three. I couldn't do one day of what Terry Fox did. Not one. One leg. My leg, the stump, hurts like hell. Mm. You ran a marathon yesterday. You're running another marathon tomorrow. The day in the middle, I couldn't do. I just can't do it. And think about the one shoe that he had. They're like like what, like what Converse All-Stars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the stuff that you just wear around... Funny enough, just last night at the rink, I was talking about how sore my feet were from wearing them all day. Just walking around like a schlub. Never mind running a marathon. Incredible. The only other, like, you know, isn't who invented penicillin? Wasn't that a Canadian? Bunting or something banting. like the banting? Yep. Like, I, you know, they might go that route of it, maybe, potentially. I, I And again, I, I can see where you would think that. Yeah. But imagine, and, and it's something, uh, I think, kind of a mental exercise you do, where you think, okay, let's think of the group of people who are sitting, now I know we're judging the thought process inside a government office, which is idiotic to begin with, but then you put 24 people in the room. I'd love to hear from the person who says it shouldn't be dairy Fox. If you do a, a, if it's a legitimate conversation, and you do go with... Frederick Banting, who came up with his insulin. Insulin, sir. Then okay. Yeah. You go, you know what? He, he helped the world. And and that's a great Canadian uh, invention. Or whatever you would call it. Discovery. Discovery of insulin. But Terry, like, how do you say no? 
You might say, t I guess, and I, I don't even get my head around, oh, well, he might be in second or third place. How is he, how is he not first? I, I truly don't get this. You don't always have to go in the room and be like, somebody talk me out of Terry Fox. Like, yeah. somebody here talk me out of it. Yeah. Because it's like, like, I don't know how you yeah. could. And, and I don't care if there's 250 schools named after. Sure. He still belongs on the list. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Banting, Banting probably deserves something of that of that ilk. There's probably other people, much like Viola Desmond, that we don't know about, who deserves that stuff too. But talk me out of Terry Fox. Well, and, and to, to your original point, Johnny, I, th I think it's great that it's Viola Desmond, and she did teach that. But I just don't think that has to be yeah, yeah. A, a part. And how many other Viola Desmonds are there out there? I don't know. Mm. I mean... Plus, it would be an educational purpose, too. Yeah. Like, there would be a lot of kids I'm who don't saying, know a lot like, about Terry Fox that would learn more they about easily could have put Terry on the 10. Yeah. Right? They easily could yeah. have, but they didn't. They did this, and I'm wondering kind of what that... Well, that's a good point. Because nobody threw it out there. No, this wasn't a big discussion at the time. It was just like, hey, there's a new $10 bill. It's this lady, and then we all kind of learned about it for like three and a half weeks. Well, you could you could see someone saying, eh, it's a little cliche. I, I could see somebody say, going into an office. Somebody who, yeah, you know, like a bureaucrat, some... Yeah. Like, Mandarin. of course it's Terry. Of course it's Terry. Of course it's... I, I need to see what you're saying. Yeah. I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, if if it's not, then I think there's a problem. Like, no one I find in this country gets... Not no one, but gets a lot of love. We just talked about him yesterday. What's his name? 1972, the goal. Paul Henderson. Right. Okay, and he's loved in this country, and it's wonderful. He scored a goal in hockey. It doesn't belong on the ten to, on the $5 bill. No. Still a great guy. And how many different movies and books and things have has been made from that Summit Series and his goal, which is great, fine. Mm -hmm. So then don't give me that, you know, Terry Fox has already got enough schools named after him sort of thing. You know what I mean? Well, if you're going to give yeah. a hockey player that much love, you've yeah. got to give even more to Terry Fox. I could say, and I, and I don't know that you can say this about many people, because people do tend to surprise us, and out of the woodwork come people who do amazing things in the world. I can't, I don't have room in my head for somebody to take Terry Fox's place in my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see anyone, as long as I'm this on this planet, ever surpassing that. Ever. Like, I, uh, what are you going to do? On no legs? And, and, uh, and uh, you know, in my mind, I think most people think the way you think, and I think, and Johnny thinks. What's cracking, Mark? Hey, just hanging out, guys. Just going to say? I just threw a hint out there. All just right. saying it. Yeah. Uh, Thanks to uh, Roger yes. Le O mm -hmm. or Roger Waters, yeah. 17th of July, Scotia Bank Arena. I always thought oh, uh, Agua was oh, uh, how you say water in French. I believe that's Spanish, isn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I actually just learned that yeah. like a few months ago. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Mark, you ready to rock and roll or what? Yeah. Good okay. luck, Mark. He's taking down the big dog. Oh. John is leaving the studio, as he mentioned just previously. You've got that extra 10 seconds, 40 seconds uh, on the clock, so take advantage of it. Here we go. Mark, which fast food restaurant offers the Big Mac? McDonald's. What is the rumored name of the new Seattle NHL team? Cracking. What is added to dough to make it rise? Uh, uh, pass. Who is the original host of TV's Unsolved Mysteries? Uh, pass. What country's phone book is alphabetized by first name? Uh, uh, pass. What is added to dough to make it rise? Uh, uh, yeast. Who is the original host of TV's Unsolved Mysteries? Karina. The original host, uh, it doesn't matter, you got it wrong. What country's phone book is alphabetized by first name? M, I know, I know. Okay, you did well with three. We're not gonna let John know how you did though. Okay. And you got four. Oh, here he comes. I can't say anymore. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more later on. We don't tell John how you did, other than you had lots of fun. Marcus Aurelius Maximilius. All right. Okay. I don't want to know. I oh, yeah. yeah. All right, Hit right, the right. ground running. Do you know Pan Yeah, I do. Yeah, thank, you, thank, you, man. thank you. 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 Okay. 30 seconds. Here we go. Which fast food restaurant offers the Big Mac? Seriously? I know. McDonald's. What is the rumored name of the new Seattle NHL team? Greg and. What is added to dough to make it rise? Yeasty. Who is the original host of TV's Unsolved Mysteries? Bob Stack. <laughs> what country's phone book is alphabetized by first name? China. Uh, enough for the win, though. Bob Stack got you the win. Come on. And I, did you say Dennis Farina? Is that what you said, Mark? 
Yeah. Respect. He was a host later on in the show, but not the original. The late, great Dennis Farina. Oh, man. And what country is it? Iceland. No way. Because their last names are like their father's first names with son or daughter the attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you so go. You well, go. Mark. Thank you very much for playing this morning, pal. We'll do it again tomorrow on a Friday. Tickets to Roger Waters.